In this video, we will be covering the latest features of Setpoint CMS. To start with, let's take a look at the new scaling features. So one way you can scale your data is with auto scaling. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. So if I play back the data here, you can see the plot continually scale based on what data is being shown. So this is useful to get a good look at the data, but it can be annoying because the plot is always changing size. So, so a new way we have to scale the data is what we call auto all. And that will scale to whatever data you're seeing and then keep that scale as new data comes in and only increase the scale if the data is bigger than the scale that's already there. So you can see it, it adjusts to the data, but it doesn't jump around as much. So it, it can be more useful in lots of situations. And you can also come up here and reset the scale if you want to zoom in again, and then it'll, it'll stick to the biggest data again. So that's kind of how you, you can auto scale the data in two different ways. Another option we have is to manually scale the data. So I can open up the, the scale pane here, and I can see I have different sections for each of the different plot types. So I, I can expand those and go ahead and scale the data for that plot type. So first I'll, I'll turn off auto scaling, so we're using the manual scaling. And now I can come in here and give it a different scale. Uh, and so the plot will scale to that. And then I can independently scale a different plot type to a different scale. So if I, if I need to use different scales per plot type, that's now available. And then finally, what you can do is you can scale a plot independently. So up here in the plot settings, you can open that up. And up in the top here, we have plot scales. So you can go to a particular plot and punch in a scale. So if you need to compare data and have exact scales for every plot, you can now do that. So those are the new scaling features we have available. The next feature we have is state-based displays. This allows you to annotate what state your data is in and then visualize it on your data plots. So to start with, let's go ahead and add some states to the data. So I can right click on the trend here and add a state in. So I'll go ahead and add a startup state in. I'll select a color for it. And that adds it to the plot so I can see now that, that everything following this annotation is in the startup state. So then when the data goes into another state, I can click on it and add in an additional state. So I'll add a steady state in here. We'll give it a different color. And then we'll go ahead and add two more states in. So we'll add the coast down in. And then we'll add a slow roll state in. Okay, so now that we have states, we can, we can use those on our plots. So to do that, from the view menu here, we can turn on state-based displays. And now that colors the data based on what state it's in. So now we can see on the Bodhi plot that you can easily differentiate the startup data from the coast down data. And then you can even see the steady state data kind of here in the end. So that makes it a lot easier to differentiate, differentiate your data without clicking around on it to figure out what state it's in. So as you click around on the data, the header will also show you what state your, the data your cursor is in. Um, and you see, as I click around, the the orbit is colored in the state that you're in at that time. So we've brought this through to all the plots. So you can even pull up, say, a waterfall and see all your, your waveforms, all your spectrums displayed in the state they're in. So it makes it easier to tell at a glance what data you're looking at and, and what state it's going to be in. Another change we've made is to allow you to pull up the plot on, on a second screen. So what you can do is go to the settings menu here on the plot, 
and, and the settings menu, menu is also available from a right click. So you don't have to worry about going up here to the corner. So you can right click on it. And then I'm gonna pop out this plot to a second screen. So by default, it opens up in full screen, but you can, you can resize this plot. So, and this works best if you have two monitors, because then you can have this large plot on a second monitor, and then you can continue to navigate your data and look at different data. So I, I can pull up a, a different plot type here and look at it a different way and still have this, this one on the screen. So that's, that's the pop-out plot. And, and then another option we have for the plot is you can lock the time on it. So again, I, I can come to the settings menu here and I can click lock time. So when I do that, this plot's now locked. So, so as, I, as I navigate around in time, that plot sticks to where, where I added it. And so I can have a second plot that is still synced with the cursor time. What we've also done is we've made it so you can select what trace shows up on the timeline. So, so you're, you're not stuck anymore with, with whatever trace uh, the software try, decides to give you by default. You can go in and change it and specify exactly what shows up. Another feature we've added to the new version of Setpoint is the ability to compensate data on the data table. Uh, so we've always had compensation for the other transient plots like the Bode and the Polar, but we've now added it to, to, the, to the data table so you can, you can compensate the individual values that are showing up. So, so here I have uncompensated data, but let's go ahead and turn on compensation for this data set. So when I do that, the, the slow roll vectors get removed from the data, and now we can see the the compensated data in the trend. And the final feature we want to look at today is an air gap plot. We, we've added a, a hydro specific plot so you can see the air gap around, around the hydro turbine. Uh, so I'll open up that file and bring up the plot. So here we can see the air gap plot. Uh, so each of the air gap sensors will show up on this plot. And we also show the set point values. So you can see how close we're getting to the alarm limit. So these outer circles here, the red and yellow one, are the alert and danger limits. So you can see at, as the air gap approaches our, our, our clearance in the turbine. The data identifies the minimum max pole space on the gap, so you can tell at a glance uh, which, which section has the tightest clearance and where it is on the turbine. It also identifies where the sensors are on the turbine, so you can tell the relationship of everything, as well as the where the phase trigger is located. So that's the air gap plot. And that's a, a basic overview of the features that have been added to the new version of, of Setpoint CMS. Please visit our website to download the latest version of Setpoint CMS. We look forward to working with you in the future.